All right, boys and girls, welcome back to the drive through for a special Ghost Town edition of the drive through sponsored by the Deli. We have two people in class today, and we're doing 13-3, uh, which is double integrals in polars. Okay, so first let's do some easy little polar reviews. Right, that's why we're doing them. It's been a while. I'd like for you two to describe the limits on R and theta for those two. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, hold on. Sorry, and let's go. I put a one there, so... Good. Okay. What about the second one? What do you think? That's fine. Mm-hmm. And R? Mish? Good. Okay, so that's something we'll be doing today. No, you wouldn't want to say that theta has no bounds in polars, okay, even though I totally understand what you're saying, because what happens is as we integrate that, it's going to keep going over and over. So if, if let's say you said it went to 4 pi, well, now you'd get, tw you'd get twice the area, okay? Okay, so the next thing um, I want you to try to do is, okay, first, let me tell you something. This thing right here is called a polar sector, okay? We are going to um, treat polar sectors the way we treat the little rectangles that represent dy, dx, which is dA, okay? And we're going to add up all these little polar sectors to get the area of our region. So what we do is we consider this d theta. So think about it like theta started here and then it changed just a little bit. So obviously this is an enlarged picture. We consider this part to be R, and then this is like we, R grew just a little bit, okay? So that's dr. Could you guys um, find this arc length for me? Okay, good. So it's going to be d theta over 2 pi. That's the portion of the circle taken up by this angle times the circumference, which is? Uh, no, just 2 pi r in this case. Because keep in mind, we only want, I'm only asking you for this arc length. And so this is r, okay? So then if we do a little canceling, it's r d theta. So this thing right here, this arc length is r d theta. All right, well, we're going to use a little bit of our calculus magic, but just kind of imagine that as this polar sector region gets infinitesimally small, or as um, d theta approaches zero and as dr approaches zero, because we're going to take the limit as, you know, as they approach zero, kind of, this polar sector is kind of going to turn into a, a rectangle when we have infin infinitely many of them. So we are going to be able to find this polar sector by just doing r d theta times dr, okay? So this represents the area 
of the polar sector. Now, what did we compare that to yesterday? Exactly. We compared it to dy dx. So this is the first thing I want you to understand, and it's going to be what you screw up. Where yesterday, where we had dy dx, now we have r dr d theta. And people always forget about the extra r. Okay? So now let's let's learn our little change. to polar equation. So, if you have a double integral over some region with some rectangular function here, just remember that we call it dA because we don't know or care right now if it's dy dx or dx dy. And that's why we also call it R, because we don't know which goes which. If we have this, that's going to be the same thing as the double integral. And I'm going to give you the two examples that we can have it. That's an alpha and a beta, but for angles. So G1. Okay, now. I'm going to skip what's inside here for a second and just remind you, this is what we just learned. This is now R. This is R equals G of theta. Remember that in polars, the radius is a function of the angle. Okay? So it's like, okay, so that's R dr d theta. Well, I'm going to allow you to change it because sometimes it might be a little easier. Well, sometimes you'll have to change it, I should say. But here is what's kind of ugly. X turns into R cosine theta. And Y turns into R sine theta. Okay? It could also be the integral of G1 of theta to G2 of theta. The integral from alpha the beta, hold on, no, no, no. these would have to be, these would have to be constants, but they still could be constants. So this would be A and B then in that case, okay, of F of R cosine theta, R sine theta, R d theta, dr. So that would just be if we switched the bounds of integration. And I guess that would be considered, uh, let's see, r simple. So in that case, it would be like this one. You know what I mean? But what we could have as functions as like, got it? Okay. Okay, so now, let's just reassure ourselves that we're right. Oh, that's unacceptable. The first one's bad in itself. All right, what's the area of this wash? 9 pi, okay? So we already know that. Now let's see. Um, remember how we started this whole chapter out by finding the areas of things that we already could find the areas of, but we were using double integrals to practice? Let's do that right here. So set it up for me. And let's, let, me t let me ask you to do this. Keep it dr d theta. So now you don't have a choice. So what's going to go on the outside? Yep, so zero to what? Yep. And on the inside? Yep. And now this is just a one, meaning there's no height on this. Okay, you might think, does that mean the height's always one? Well, it means we're slicing it. 
um, it's a lamina. There's no height. We're getting no volume out of this. Okay? Alright, so 0 to 2 pi of the integral with respect to r is r squared over 2 from 4 to 5 d theta. Okay? So let's see, that's 25 minus 9 over 2. It's, hold on, what is that? Okay, so that's the integral from 0 to 2 pi of 25 over 2 minus 9 over 2. Sorry, minus 16 over 2. Yep. Um, d theta. So it's the integral from 0 to pi of 9 over 2. Sorry, 2 pi of 9 over 2 d theta. So um, it's 9 theta over 2 as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi. Sweet. What did we get? 9 pi. So now we know that it works. Got it? Okay, so if you guys want to follow along with this in your notes, we're going to end the lecture by just starting our homework. So um, number five is really easy. So we're going to go on the number nine. Do number five as part of your homework, but this is number nine um, from 13, three. Okay. The directions say, evaluate the double integral over the region and sketch the region. So what we have is the integral from zero to two pi. zero to six of three r squared sine theta dr d theta. Okay? We'll evaluate it first, but one thing I want you to note is that there's no r dr d theta here, so clearly they have multiplied that r through. So that's going to be important a little later. Okay? Let's just practice evaluating it first. The integral of 3 r squared sine theta with respect to r is 3 r cubed over 3. So it's r cubed sine theta from 0 to 6 d theta. So what is 6 cubed? 36 times 6, 72 times 3, 216. Okay. Uh, integral of sine, negative cosine. Negative cosine, right? So you get 216, negative 216 cosine of theta as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, which gives you negative cosine of 2 pi is 1, so you get negative 216 minus negative 216, which is also the cosine of 0, which is 0. Okay? Thank, thankfully, I can actually explain this to you. Like, I feel so good about myself because what do we say this actually was is, so let me just take this. That's equal to 3 r sine theta r dr d theta, right? What was r sine theta in polars? It's y, right? So what this is in rectangular, okay, um, is 3y. So now let's sketch the region. 
Okay, we know that uh, r goes from zero to six, and that theta goes from zero to two pi. So what is our what is our region? Yeah, we know that r goes from zero to six, and that theta goes from zero to two pi. So what's our region? What's it look like? It's a circle, right? Oh, yeah. Radius six, right? Yeah. So in this sense, this is no different than the overhead view from rectangular. But we don't know, um, we don't know the answer to why is the, this answer zero, right? Why did we get zero volume for this? Here's why. It's that part about the region being positive over positive over the region. So check out what this would look like. One of the hardest things for me to do is drawing a circle in this plane. I'll settle for it. It's not great, but okay? So that is that. Now, the the equation is z equals 3y, right? This point here is what? What's the point? 0 it's zero six zero, right? Because our bounds is this, right? Okay. So at this point, our z height is eighteen up. It's three times six. You feel me? At this point, our z height is zero. But at this point, what's our z height? It's negative 18. Okay? And so what you're going to have is this plane, exactly, is doing that. And now let me go back to my blue and do the best I can to actually show you what this graph would look like. Like that, and that. And then it would go through here. Here I got I got to tie these ends together. Can you feel me? Do you see how that's symmetric? And the amount of volume in the positive side is exact same amount as the amount of negative volume, and that's how we get zero for our answer. Boom.